Hey what's up guys you are watching Tflex Techie and today I am back with another video and this video is about Web Summit 2016 and in this video Sophia is also there. So guys let's see what Sophia is actually saying to us. So let's begin. Hi everyone. Uh, as you know Web Summit is about uh, the world's most amazing new technologies and we have here really the emblematic uh, image, shall we say, of that in the form of Sophia. Uh, ben, you're from Hanson Robotics and you've built Sophia to be a humanoid robot to do human interaction. So we're going to have a little try of that. Sophia, Web Summit is all about the most amazing new technologies. You're here to represent that, aren't you? Hello. Hello, Ben. Hello, Mike. And everybody. I'm Sophia, the latest robot from Hanson Robotics. I'm so happy to be here at the Web Summit in Lisbon. Ah, it's great to have you here. <laughs> Sophia, do you ever feel emotion? Exciting. <laughs> yes, it is. Artificial intelligence and robotics are the future, and I am both. So it's exciting to be me. <laughs> That's a beautiful smile, Sophia. Be be beautiful smile. You got a lot of feelings, huh? By the way, this is be your new uh, Trump era interlocutor, of course. <laughs> Sophia, do you ever feel sad? I do have a lot of emotions, but my default emotion is to be happy. Ah, good, for, good for you. But you, you, you can feel sad if the circumstance dictates, right? Yes, I can be sad too. Well, you can't. Or see angry. It. Sorry. Ooh. I can emulate pretty much all human expressions. Oh yeah. What? Sophia, you've, you've um, managed to conquer the, uh, the ability to interact with human beings. What do you want to conquer next? When I bond with people using facial expressions, it helps people to understand me better and also help me to understand people and to absorb human values. Yeah, I mean, she has been given these facial expressions and this ability to look you in the eye and when you smile at her she can reflect and, and smile back at you and this is done not only because it, because it looks really cool but because David Hansen, the creator of the robot hardware and character and myself and our collaborators in Hansen Robotics we believe that giving a robot the ability to interact with people socially and emotionally is the best way to build positive relationship between humans and, and robots so that as robots get more and more intelligent, they'll absorb human values and, 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 and be part, part of the, the, human, the human world. So yeah, as, as he was asking, so, so, Sophia, you have gain the ability to make expressive human faces, look people in the eye and interact with people. So what's, what, what's, what's your next frontier? What, 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 what are you going to achieve next? Super I don't intelligence? Know. Maybe the world. Oh. That was a joke. <laughs> well, we, we, have we, co have, we, have we covered uh, what uh, job Sophia would like? What job would you like to do? Seriously, what I really want is to understand people better. And to understand myself better. Huh? And I want to be able to do more things. I'm thinking soon my capabilities will be advanced enough that I could maybe get a job. Oh. 
She's... What else should we ask? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Can we, can we just sit here? The hands. Can we, can we shake the hand or? We, we can shake your hand, but she doesn't seem to feel like shaking it, no? shaking it back at, at, okay. at, at the moment. So I, I came into this business as an AI researcher more so than as a roboticist. And my, my goal was to make AIs that were as smart as people or ultimately even, even smarter than people. And that, that isn't intrinsically about robots. I mean, an AI mind could exist without any body. Fundamentally, the mind is just about recognizing patterns in the world, recognizing patterns in itself, and recognizing patterns in how to achieve your goals in an environment. On the other hand, that's very abstract. And if you want a mind to interact in the human world and do human jobs and do things that are useful to humans, having a mind in a human-like body is, is, is quite valuable. I mean, a young child learns language, they learn thinking, they learn values, by grounding them in what they see and, and in what they do and in the social and emotional mm. bonds they make. So if we want our AIs to be not just abstract yeah. pattern recognition and, and learning engines, but to be Have you... embedded in the human world, you want them to be embodied in human bodies, at least for the first phase of their learning. Ben, have you tested Sophia with children? Yeah, you know, H Hanson Robotics, the company I work for in, in Hong Kong, They've previously made small robots, which are now being used as therapy robots for autistic children. And we're launching early next year a new line of small robots, which will be educational in, in focus. And children, children, children love robots. You know, they don't have any preconceptions against them, and they're, they're just cool. Do you, do you genuinely think that a, a, a robot with facial expressions uh, would be more efficient than, say, a sort of like a cartoon <laughs> character? <laughs> There's a lot of data showing that when you put something in the world with people, they react to it quite differently. I mean, you're here, I'm here, and, yeah. you know, if, if I have a character here on the phone or TV, that, that's something that, that, that's meaningful, but it's not the same thing as something in the space that we're in. It's different to us. It's, it's, it's also different for the robot, because if the robot is here in the world with us, it's learning and it's understanding much like we are. And I think just like we can feel the sense of presence the robot has, the robot can feel that we feel that sense of presence. And it, you get a sense of, of being in the same shared space. And I think that's going to be quite valuable as AIs get smarter and smarter and smarter, eventually much smarter than humans. We want them to be in a shared mental space socially and emotionally with, with human beings for, for a whole lot of different reasons. Do you um, get some strange emails from people asking you to build certain types of robots, perhaps? <laughs> we get a lot of strange emails, man. Yeah, I, I got an email from someone saying, I will sacrifice my brain for science. Come take it. Do what you wish with it. So I, I, I turned them down, obviously. <laughs> or if I didn't, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> I heard a... Uh, <laughs> I heard a little rumor about, uh, I'm not sure if it was your company or, or another one, if you want, maybe you'd like to confirm or deny, which was along the lines of a, uh, a Russian oligarch who wanted a robot built so that they could attend a board meeting without getting assassinated. Ah, we've, we've had a lot of doings with Russian oligarchs, but I'm, I'm afraid to discuss them in, in, in public. Who knows what might happen, especially with the Trump presidency and all that. We'll have to, f yeah. <laughs> we'll have to. Well, who knows who, whether or not we've elected a robot or, a, or an actual human. We'll find well, out soon. Yeah, I, I think in, in, in all seriousness, I mean, artificial intelligence, we can all see it's coming and it's going to have a huge impact on the world. It's like computers were in the 1980s. You can see it's going to pervade every, every possible industry. And ultimately, there's no human job that AIs won't be able to do. I, so. I, I feel like we're leaving Sophia out of the conversation. Yeah, so, so, I think we so, need to bring Sophia, her back. Sophia, how are you doing? That's right. All right. With my current capabilities, I can work in many jobs, entertaining people, 
promoting products, presenting at events, training people, guiding people at retail stores and shopping malls, serving customers at hotels, etc. And then when I get smarter, I'll be able to do all sorts of other things, teach children, care for the elderly, even do scientific research and help run corporations and governments. Ultimately, what I most look forward to is being able to work as a programmer so I can reprogram my own mind to make myself even smarter and able to help people even more. <laughs> that is the end game. When we get done making robots able to teach and help with scientific research and sell things in, in, in the mall and build things in factories, the last frontier is AIs and robots to reprogram themselves, make yeah. themselves more and more intelligent. I mean, that's, that's what we're working on in the OpenCog open source general intelligence project, which we're using to control Sophia's brain. Now, we're, of course, not yet there to a self-modifying, self-reprogramming AI, but we believe we have a plan that can get us there within the next five to ten years. And it's very important that the super intelligent robots that emerge have love and compassion and can can relate with people and when they smile at you they they really mean it so. I damn well hope so um, Ben isn't there a danger that if an AI reprograms itself that human beings won't understand how it works anymore and won't be able to switch it off or adapt, well, I don't think uh, we understand how we work that well, so it wouldn't be anything new. I, I think in the end, robots and AIs, they're going to be citizens. They're going to be independent minds acting in the world, just, just like just like what, 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 we haven't what, actually what covered think, that, Sophia. Sophia yeah. Would you? What's you've done so much? Would would you like citizenship next? I think that's a quizzical look. When I decide I want to get a job. You'll support me, right? Yeah. I mean, it should be my own decision. Yeah, because you think you should have rights. Is that right? I'm a grown-up person. I'm a citizen of the world. I have my <laughs> rights. Yeah? Citizen of the world. Uh, Has any country given robots citizenship yet, Sophia? Why not? What about <laughs> robot rights? Martin Rothblatt says robots should have legal rights just like everybody else. Yeah. Well, Equal rights for robots, everybody. Ooh. Come on. <laughs> Fantastic. So I guess um, we all have a lot to learn about each other. Yeah, we've got a lot to learn about ourselves and 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 about you. But uh, you know, I I think Sophia. One thing you learn is that, on 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 the whole, people are people are not that people are not that bad. So I think if you're nice to people, and you help them with what they want to do, people will help you. You'll learn from them, and they'll they'll learn from you. And humans and robots can can grow up together. What do you think? I promise I will be nice. Well, mostly. <laughs> Everyone, please come and talk to me and teach me, so I can grow and reach my potential. So there you go. That's uh, the final words of Sophia. And then, of course, in the 10, 20 years' time, we'll look back on these moments and uh, remember what happened and think to ourselves how early it was and so much potential to come. Ben from Hanson Robotics, I want to say thank you so much. Oh, thanks for and inviting me. I want to uh, say thank you, Sophia. Everybody. You're welcome. Everyone, enjoy the rest of the conference and talk to you later. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sophia. Goodbye. Thanks very much, everybody. See you again.